Hello, and welcome to this edition of Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, representing the Upper West Side in the New York City Council. Today I'll be talking about the challenges of owning and operating a small business in New York City, as well as the tools the city has to offer to help these businesses thrive. Joining me today is Jenny Bourne, the owner of Bourne Digital, which produces marketing and promotional videos for businesses, and Greg Bishop, Commissioner of the New York City Department of Small Business Services. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for I really us. appreciate it. Commissioner, I'd like to start by talking about some of the myths that are out there uh, about what the city can or cannot do to help our small businesses. Um, you know, unlike a recent op-ed in the New York Times, which claimed that uh, government and elected officials aren't doing anything to help our small businesses, which we all very much want to survive and thrive. Um, I know the city is doing a lot. Uh, so the first myth that's out there that I hear all the time is, is that we actually give tax breaks to vacant store, to vacant stores. So in other words, if a building owner can't fill their store, they get a tax break. Is that true? Right. So, so that's, that's incorrect. And, and thank you very much uh, for having me here and uh, for your advocacy on small businesses. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to uh, say that, you know, there's an agency um, with over 300 individuals who every day are working really hard uh, to ensure small businesses start, expand, and operate in New York City. Uh, yeah. So the myth that no one is paying attention is absolutely false. Um, there's so many things and so many services that we offer at Small Business Services. I'd love to, um, you know, just take a moment and, and just say that, you know, over the past year, we've helped mm -hmm. over 9,000 businesses um, connect to over nine. Uh, nine set of services that we offer through our NYC Business Solution Centers, mm -hmm. um, everything from education uh, to financing uh, to legal assistance uh, to helping find employees uh, to our minority and women-owned business uh, uh, program to connect to city contracts. Um, so there's a wealth of services that we offer at the agency to help small businesses. Uh, we certainly work uh, with our neighborhood, through our neighborhood div uh, division, uh, with commercial corridors and with nonprofits mm -hmm. uh, to help strengthen those corridors. Uh, I absolutely, um, you know, I, I get a little bit upset um, because we do uh, a lot uh, to really help create a vibrant corridor. Uh, anytime you have a vacant storefront, it's not healthy for that corridor. Uh, so some of the things that we're doing, um, we work uh, with community-based organizations. Uh, we do and fund uh, nonprofit organizations uh, to do retail attraction type of services uh, to help landlords find uh, the right tenant, uh, but not only help them find a tenant, but the right tenant. Uh, because in some areas, uh, you may not, you may have a saturation of one type of business, and you want to diversify the types of business in that corridor. Uh, so we certainly help uh, by creating uh, opportunities, uh, we call them commercial district needs assessments, uh, where we do analysis of the, the community. We talk about what, you know, what the retail leakage is like, meaning where are people, why are people leaving the community to actually shop elsewhere. Mm. Uh, so that will help a landlord figure out, well, if the community is leaving, uh, and spending a lot of money in another community, maybe in another neighborhood, maybe the community is looking for that particular store. Ah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But real quickly, do they get a tax break they if they not. leave it vacant? They do not. So there's no benefit to them to there leaving is, it vacant. Uh, and you know, you have to understand uh, from a landlord's point of view, yeah. right? Uh, so the landlord owns the building. Um, they are looking for a tenant. Uh, it's a marriage. Um, and certain landlords, unfortunately, have taken sort of the tactic of, I want to find a, a large chain uh, that has mm. deep pockets um, and that has, you know, the, the sort of the credit and I know that my rent will be paid. Um, and the, what we're saying is that there's a lot of small businesses that also can be great tenants. Um, and the services we provide um, is to help those small businesses become great tenants. Right. Speaking of which, I think we have a great uh, business owner right here. <laughs> Jenny, uh, talk about your experience as a small business owner. Has it been easy, hard to work with the city? Um, what's it like in your community? Um, it's challenging to be a small business owner. Um, you can be very, very good at what you do, but it doesn't mean you know how to run a business. And I set out about two years ago 
to bring my expertise, which is producing video, primarily for the web, uh, into a business. And small business services have helped me tremendously. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, my, my hat is really off to you, Commissioner, because I didn't know where to start. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's many people competing and saying they want to help uh, small businesses. I went online, I found small business services, and I started with the basics. And it, it really was an education. Um, I'm an educator, I teach myself. So I recognize high quality workshops <laughs> when I attend them. And uh, the focus is, is really excellent to give someone like me an orientation to how you do business. And so do you have an actual shop, a storefront? No, I actually work out of my home. Um, mm -hmm. I'm growing in leaps and in bounds as, as a result of taking advantage of these services. So uh, someday soon, I will need to ha actually have um, a, a shop. And I'm, I'm on the Upper West Side, so I, I hope it's going to uh, be here on the Upper West Side. Um, I have some vacant storefronts to show you okay. <laughs> when that talk. time comes. Um, Commissioner, that's so interesting. So a lot of the small businesses, in fact, could be, you know, with the startups, they're not necessarily in a piece of real estate. No. Um, we have, uh, you know, a number of uh, different types of businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, you have... Uh, entrepreneurs who are in professional services who actually they don't need a brick and mortar um, and some of the things that we teach um, at SBS through our NYC business solutions set of services um, you know we have business plan and basics we have 10 steps to starting a business we have financial I, I management yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really to help you understand as you are building out your business um, you know why am I in business am I in business uh, for the long haul am I in business to sell uh, to you know to the next uh, company mm. etc because that will determine your strategy uh, to, so to some extent you may not need a brick and mortar um, you know there's a lot of uh, for example you know the work that you're in uh, you can do all that behind an, a, a PC or a Mac um, so you just need broadband for example um, but there are some businesses, um, you know, there are some retail uh, restaurants. Uh, New York City has over 200,000 small businesses. Oh, wow. Um, and another myth is that, you know, we are a city full of chains. We're not. Um, I, I, I dare you to, th to, to count the amount of red lobsters you can between 125th <laughs> and uh, Times Square. I, I think there's only two. But between those, those, those blocks, how many restaurants can you right, count? Right, right, right. So that's what makes New York City so special. Right. Um, and we certainly know that the city's complicated. The city's, you know, is over 100 years old. Our infrastructure is pretty old. Um, and certainly uh, there's been layers and layers and layers of regulation uh, to help save and to help protect, you know, the citizens of New York City. Uh, but the sort of uh, unintended consequence is that it's become very difficult uh, as a business owner because you know you have to navigate the buildings department you have to navigate the fire department you have to navigate the health department you have to navigate landmarks in case you're in the area in the area in the Upper West Side or, or somewhere right. that's landmark um, so we know that there's difficulty so that's why we've created our business acceleration service uh, to really help make it easier for businesses to navigate the number of city agencies uh, and to help make things a little bit more simpler. Is, and, this, is this your new um, computer system that you were telling me about so, where they can so, so, so navigate it, the different it, agencies? Th there's part of, it's part of that. Okay. Um, uh, we have a new uh, set of services uh, where we can help businesses expedite. So one of the things that we know, because it's so challenging, is that we want to help businesses save money. Uh, right. Anywhere possible, we want to help you save money. Uh, time is money. Uh, so if you're looking for capital, uh, you know, businesses spend a number, business owners spend a number of time just researching capital. Uh, so we have a team, uh, you just come into us, we sit down with you one-on-one, -on -one, we figure out what's your capital need, uh, and then we connect you to the right lender. If you're looking for staff, you don't have to sort through a number of resumes. We can tell us the skill set that you're looking for, and we will source the candidates. So it's the same way if you're opening up a store, we don't want you to spend money on an expediter. Just come to us. 
uh, we definitely want to talk to you before you sign your lease. Uh, we definitely want to help you. Yes, right. if we, I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt you no, on that right. one because it's There's so important. Yes. Um, but we held a small business clinic this yep. summer and thank you so much. Yep. Your staff was extraordinary yep. and really helped our... It's a great team. Yeah, it's a great team that helped our local small businesses. Yep. Um, but signing a lease was critical and I didn't realize that you can help the small businesses before they sign yep. or when they're about to renew. Yep. Tell us about some of the tricks right. or some of the things people should be looking so, out for. So, so one of the reasons why I'm so thankful for you uh, to invite me on the show is that um, you know we are, are definitely working on the awareness of our services. Uh, business owners need to know um, that before they sign a lease, they should come to us. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, number one, uh, particularly on the lease front, it is a long-term marriage that you're entering into. Mm. Um, and there are some landlords who are, uh, you know, they are looking uh, forward to having a small business in their, in their space. Uh, and there's some landlords who, you know, they're looking to make money. Um, and uh, you can tell the difference, right? Because you'll look at the lease and you'll see that most of the liability uh, is on you as the tenant. And those are the landlords who, they're savvy. Uh, you know, if there's any increase in property tax, they'll pass it on to you. Uh, if there's any repairs that needs to be done on the sidewalk, they'll pass it on to you. Uh, commercial tenants, everything uh, that is in terms of your rights are in that lease. It is not the same as residentials, uh, residential mm. tenants. Uh, we know that as a residential tenant, uh, the building has to provide heat, the building has to provide hot water, mm. uh, you have rights. Um, and you know certainly we've moved the needle forward to help commercial tenants. Uh, thank to thanks to you and uh, your uh, colleague, uh, council member uh, Robert Cornegie. He's amazing. To, He's the chair of the small businesses committee right. in the council. And he in from June, Brooklyn. right? Uh, and you know I love Brooklyn. Um, uh, Sorry. He, <laughs> I still like it. <laughs> he passed uh, with uh, the, the 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 rest of the council, as you know. Uh, the first commercial tenant protection uh, yes. bill. Um, before that, commercial tenants had no, no protection under the law. Uh, so certainly your lease is sort of your contract uh, with that landlord. Yeah. Uh, so it's vitally important that you understand every single paragraph and every single clause that's in that lease. And somebody can go online to your website and sure. find out about it. We're having clinics on the Upper West Side going forward every couple of months. We're now yep. going to institute this. Yep. Um, and someone can go, you know, you need to call 311 mm -hmm. or go to nyc.gov uh, slash SBS um, or nyc.gov slash business um, and actually connect to an account manager at a NYC Business oh, wow. Solutions Center. Uh, who will pair you up with a pro bono legal um, attorney oh, wow. um, and help review your lease, help review any, and, and they do more than lease reviews, it, you know, contract reviews, help you establish your business. Uh, but again, we're trying to help you save money um, right. because a lot of small business owners, you know, most of the businesses that connect to our services have 10 employees or less. Um, you know, they do not have a, re a banking relationship uh, per right. se. They do not, you know, a banker that they can call up and just get a hundred thousand dollar line of credit. Uh, they do not have an attorney and a retainer. So a lot of the services we're providing is really uh, to help those small businesses grow. And so, um, Jenny, I just want to get back to you for a minute and mm -hmm. talk about there. There are such a myriad of um, government regulations. It's not only DOB and DOH, mm -hmm. Department of Health, Department of Business, but also the Department of Consumer Affairs. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering in your licensing and your starting up a business, which agencies, were any agencies particularly challenging or helpful or? N not so far. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm at the beginning of this uh, journey. Mm. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is just very clearly that small business services uh, because when I went online, I, I didn't even know where I'd gotten to, okay. right? Um, I knew that I wanted to learn how to uh, fulfill contracts as a women minority business owner. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, did you get certified as an MWB? I'm in the process. Ah, congratulations. Um, but, That's but, exciting. But I knew, and I think a lot of people are, are in my situation, they are essentially desperate for help. Yeah. They're, they're Googling to find who's out there that can help me. They've heard of the SBA re remotely, right? And so when, when they get to SBS, 
the, the, the focus is on the workshop that they're going to take and what am I going, uh, going to get. So it's hard for people to know the whole range of ser services that you're offering, mm -hmm. which is absolutely extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, the business basics um, was where I started. And I, you know, I didn't realize how little I knew about business. We assume as consumers, yeah. We know about business from our experience as consumers. Yeah. We don't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> business <laughs> is about service. You have to be very, very focused. And that's what I'm still in the process of learning. I changed my business entirely uh, mm. from the, the time yeah. that I came to you yeah. because I knew my original approach, which included web design and video, was not sustainable. So, oh, wow. so I think um, before we get, uh, to answer your question, before we get to the individual agencies uh, that an independent business would want to interface with or, or serve as a business owner, there's a whole process um, that has to do with thinking of yourself as a business owner, right? I, you know, I only recently stopped looking for a job. Yeah. You know, I, now I have admitted to myself that I am bu in business. Yep. I'm in business to stay yep. because I know there's a support system out there for me. And, which, and, and thank you so much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great to hear, um, you know, your experience with our services. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you need is hitting on is a lot of business owners don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, mm. You know, for example, you know, I make this great product. Um, I want to sell this product. Uh, I see a great storefront. Uh, it's in a great location. At least I think it is. Uh, so I'm going to just, you know, talk to the landlord and try to sign that lease really quickly before someone else does. Uh, but you have not done your, your projections. Uh, you have not done your due diligence. You've not done, you know, any due diligence on the space. Um, so what we try to do is help business owners understand uh, these uh, fundamental uh, things uh, before you actually launch your business. Uh, so we have, um, and, and we offer a range of uh, courses, everything from the very basic. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a one-time hit, it's a workshop, you just go in. Um, but then we also offer um, a curriculum-based uh, training. So we have a program called Fast Track New Venture. Uh, so it's to help you understand some of the things that Janie's talking about in terms of, well, I have this product, but is this really sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens um, if, let's say, I get to my revenues of 50000 like, how do I get to $100,000? Um, and do I need to diversify the products that I'm offering? Uh, so all these things mm -hmm. uh, we have available, and they're at no cost uh, to uh, New Yorkers and entrepreneurs. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it, it brings a, a, a different meaning to investing in yourself. Yep. You don't have to go That's to so my alma mater, Columbia, and go to business school or uh, NYU. They're wonderful business schools. You will end up in debt. Um, the, you, you, there are services available right. if you take the initiative to learn, but that investment of time is essential. Right. And one of the things that we are doing under, under the Blasio administration uh, we understand that business owners are busy. Uh, mm -hmm. They're running their business. Uh, so certainly we're doing more, uh, not only uh, to get out into communities um, across the five boroughs and offer services and classes uh, closer uh, to the businesses. Uh, we're working with council very closely, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, uh, to bring services to their districts. Uh, but we're also targeting specific population. Uh, so, you know, the, the city of New York, over 40% of New Yorkers are native born, uh, foreign born. Um, a foreign born. Uh, foreign 40%. Born. Yeah. Um, and uh, over 50% of those are own a small business. Uh, so oh, wow. certainly uh, we know that there's a huge market there. And uh, I'm an immigrant. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, when you come to the city, you tend to stay within your circles. Uh, so we want to penetrate those circles. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly we know um, that, you know, government has a certain reputation. Uh, and we want to dispel that, that, that reputation um, and want to say that we are here to advocate for you. So we're delivering services in, in, in uh, seven different languages um, uh, so to ensure that individuals understand exactly what they need to do uh, to actually run their business. Uh, we're focused on women entrepreneurs uh, because we know women have uh, other barriers uh, to um, uh, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that men, men do not face. Um, 
and certainly, uh, again, the Minority Women Owned Business uh, Enterprise Program. As you know, as the chair of the Contracts Committee, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, also a member of the uh, Advisory Council, mm -hmm. uh, we are doing a lot in terms of uh, you know moving the bar. Uh, to connect business owners, uh, you know, like Jeannie, to city opportunities. Now, I want to be clear, you know, businesses, especially if you've been in business for over a year, you need to make a decision on whether or not government contracting is the mm. right step for you. Uh, you need to have the capacity, you need to have the staff, um, but we will help you make that determination uh, because we'll teach you. We have a course called Selling to Government where we teach you this is how we buy. This is what we buy, I and this is where we buy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I understand that you have um, a workshop now in capacity building. Yes. Because that was one of my concerns after yep. I took the selling uh, to government workshop. How will I ever get big enough? Because some yep. of these contracts are huge. Yep. But now the course to. And we can increase. start. You know, a, a business owner like you know who's thinking like, wow, like I didn't know about these services, but I've never bid on a city contract. That's fine. We actually have one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance that if you want to bid, you can sit down with us and we'll review your bid package. It's almost like before right. you submit that final exam, yeah. you have a, a, a yeah. professor review it just to make sure everything is okay. Yeah. We're not gonna give you the pricing details, but everything else will help you. Right, 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 and make sure all the T's are crossed yep. and I's are right. Eyes are dotted. Yep. So, um, well, and, and I'm sure this could be a whole separate episode of Represent NYC. It may be. Um, I like that very much, but um, I, I would like to hear um, what it's like trying to become a certified MWB for the city. Is that a mm -hmm. uh, process in and of itself, or is it something, like, why would it be appealing and how hard is it? Well, I'd always heard there were set-asides uh, for women in minority-owned businesses and had in the back of my mind that I this of course I should take advantage of this uh, so it's not a difficult process but there are emotional barriers um, for me one of the barriers was how do I ever get the financials together to um, mm. to fill in the application uh, properly and I think for a lot of business owners these very basic services are crucially important yep. because you don't get to the point where you need your contract vetted right. until you fill in all the blanks and dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Is the paperwork as voluminous it's as not, people? It's not terrible. They walk you through it step yeah. by step. When I hit the need to find um, help with um, my financials, um, I went to the Harlem office. A young woman there connected me with an accountant free of charge. Mm -hmm to oh, wow. help me uh, continue that process. Um, so it, it's not as difficult as it might seem. Yep. And in the workshops, they say again and again, we are here to help you. Come, if you hit a break point where you can't get through, come back. Yep. I, I want to say to anybody listening, do it. Yeah. You know, it, it takes tremendous humility to start a business. Tremendous humility because of exactly what you said, Commissioner. The, the amount of things that you don't know, mm -hmm. that you need to know, mm -hmm. is huge. Right. And as they come at you, it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Having support through that process is very, very helpful. Yeah. And, and that's one of the, 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 the things that we want to, the message that we want to send is that Small Business Services is here to support you. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you just, uh, I want to dispel one or two other just quick sure. myths, yeah. um, only because people come into my office uh, and say, why can't you, Helen, why can't you just fix this? Yeah. So why can't the, and, and probably I should have the um, commissioner for the Department of Finance here, but you probably know this as well. Why can't, there's a commercial rent control, there's rent control for residential buildings. Mm -hmm. Is there, could there ever be commercial rent control? Can we ever say to uh, a landlord, hey, we, we want to encourage small businesses mm -hmm. here, so cut your rent, uh, so an independent, but you, you must have, you must offer a lower rent if it's a independent or small business. Right, so, so there's, the, so the short answer is that the, you know, there's 
a pre case law that prevents the city from actually setting like commercial rent control. Ah. However, um, there's unique things we can do with zoning. Um, so we can zone a certain area and say that, okay, we're going to limit the size of a business to the X physical, amount of... physical, right. not whether or not it's independently owned Correct. or... Correct. You can't do anything if it's independently but owned, right? What we can do and, and what we are, are piloting uh, actually in East New York mm -hmm. um, is with, uh, as you know, we have an aggressive um, uh, initiative to build more affordable housing. Um, and every, you know, a lot of the affordable housing uh, will have ground floor retail. Uh, just the design of neighborhoods, you always want to have, you know, if you have residents, you want to have a mixture of retail on the ground floor, uh, you have a nice safe corridor, uh, you know, you invite restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's just great urban planning. Yeah. Um, and uh, with the rezoning of East New York, mm -hmm. uh, we are piloting on city-owned uh, property um, the initiative where as uh, the um, affordable housing is built, mm -hmm. uh, the retail will have a set aside for independent businesses. Right. Um, so we'll see how that works, um, uh, and certainly in you know with zoning we can do some clever things, um, and you know we are we we know that you know a lot of small businesses are looking um, uh, to the city for help, uh, so along with providing the services to help them become more competitive, uh, we are looking at uh, unique opportunities um, uh, with zoning. Okay, um, I love everything the city's doing, but I, I just want to clarify really for, for my residents, for people who walk in the door, mm -hmm. for people who out there uh, who want to save small businesses, mm -hmm. which we all want to save small businesses. Mm -hmm. So let's just, um, I just want to verify this with you. The, we can't uh, do commercial rent control, Correct. yes or no? No. We cannot. Um, can we, are there tax breaks for chain stores? Uh, no. That's another myth that's no. out there. It's a tax no. break for chain stores, so why don't you eliminate those? No. But the, we can't eliminate something that does not exist. Right. Okay. Just there wanted no to tax check breaks. that one. Um, laws ensuring reasonable rent increases. So, in other words, telling the business owner, sorry, telling the owner of a building, mm -hmm. you can only increase the rent by half a percent every year. Is that legal? Yes or no? No. Thank you. So we cannot do that. Can we put a fine on a landlord whose storefront is empty? Where, in other words, your storefront has been empty for over mm -hmm. a year, therefore we're going to add to your property, property tax mm -hmm. a certain amount. Is that legal? Is that something the city council so, could change a law to make that I don't know. Case? I don't know how effective that would be. Uh, and the reason why I say that is that, you know, we have explored and you know we've looked at other municipalities like San Francisco, uh, Washington DC um, and in, in Washington DC we saw that there was a vacancy tax um, with mixed results right uh, because the landlords just really it's a cost of doing business right. uh, so it, so it you really can't do did it not, high enough right okay and we can't do a cultural preservation again this would be a taking from a property owner we cannot right. no. okay yep. so I'm, I'm gonna have to wrap it up I'm so sorry we because this back. has been a great conversation yeah let's do this again great. Um, I Thanks really want to thank my guests uh, thank Jenny mm -hmm. Bourne and Commissioner Bishop for their insights thank you for your efforts on behalf of independent business and small business owners in New York City I'm Councilmember Helen Rosenthal. Thanks for watching Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Goodbye.